um, Annette Dortmund from OCLC, who joined in OCLC in 20, uh, sorry, 2001, and has worked there uh, with the European libraries of all types and sizes, including academic, public and government institutions. She's currently focusing on scholarly communications and the role of libraries in supporting research, as well as on persistent identifiers and more generally next generation metadata workflows. And Fiona um, has for the last six years focused on business development and account management roles for technology companies, including Ingenta and Highwire. Uh, applying the extensive customer focused skills and experience acquired during that career and Fiona has joined OCLC in 2018 as a sales account manager and is responsible for developing and managing existing WMS accounts with academic libraries in the south and in Wales as well as seeking to establish new relationships in that region. So with that I'm going to pass over to our speakers. Lovely, thank you very much Will. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks very much to Silip for giving um, Annette and I the opportunity to speak to you today about what OCLC are doing um, in terms of initiatives with, with metadata. Um, so next slide, please, Annette. Oh. So uh, Will has very kindly introduced us, um, which is fantastic. Thank you. So we can move to the next one. So um, what I thought I'd do just for a couple of minutes before handing over to Annette to give you the, the, the lion's share of the presentation today is just give a quick overview of who OCRC are. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with us in one way or another, but I think it's, it's useful just to, to recap. So three things really we like to, to convey in discussions like this. Um, firstly, is just the, the nature of OCLC as an organisation. So we are a not-for-profit member cooperative. So we're owned by and run by libraries globally. Um, and we have a, a number of um, committees and councils within the organisation that ensure that we fully understand what our library communities need around the world. And that is reflected in terms of what we do as an organisation. Secondly, we do um, occasionally wear the vendor hat and we do have products and services that we offer to, to the community to help um, drive efficiencies with their, their library workflows. And then thirdly, and where we're focused today is very much on the research that OCLC does an organisation and what stems from that in terms of next steps and, and next um, uh, next generation uh, functionality. Um, and we do a lot of research into the issues of the day for the library communities like open, open access and um, sustainability. And um, we've worked very closely with libraries during COVID as well to help support them. So that just gives you an indication of who OCLC as an are as an organisation. Um, next slide, please, Netta. So just to give a sense of how that global network of libraries work. So we've got um, regional councils in these three key areas around the world, um, making sure, as I said, that we understand what's going on in each of these regions, because not all libraries are the same, um, not all countries are the same. So we need to be able to understand that. Next slide. So this just gives you a sense of who represents you on the um, European, Middle East and African uh, Regional Council. Um, Ed Fay from the University of Bristol has just been elected to uh, the European Regional Council and is taking up that position as we speak. Um, next slide. Um, so those councils, um, those tw the 29,000 member libraries worldwide who elect um, these delegates to, to the Global Council um, and the members of the, the um, OCLC Board of Trustees, as you can see, are um, very senior librarians from a range of institutions from around the world. Um, next slide. So just to bring it back to what we do as an organisation, so I'm sure you've all heard of and used WorldCat at some point in your um, library careers. So that's the big data piece that drives everything that we do as an organisation. Um, WorldShare is the platform um, that we have an, uh, a number of different libraries included and some of you on the on the call today use a number of those applications in your library workflows. Um, and there's another bit on that slide, Annette, I think if you just want to press the, the button and then Wheelchair Management Services is um, our cloud based library management system um, that um, part of my role is to, to promote that uh, within the UK. Next slide, please. So just a reminder of the sheer scale of WorldCat, so 534 million records, 3.2 billion holdings. Should you wish to, you can actually sit and watch the new records drop into WorldCat uh, via our website. Um, so it, it is a massive resource. Um, next slide, Annette. 
I think that's it. So that's it for me, just to give you a general sense of, of um, who OCLC are and, and what we do as an organisation. So I'll hand over to Annette now to give you an overview of what we're doing in terms of metadata. As Will said at the beginning, please do feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, we can uh, try and answer as, they go, as we go along or we'll have the Q&A at the end of the session. So over to you, Annette. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. And thank you, everyone, for, for being here today. Um, so most of what I'm what I'm going to talk about in the next 30 minutes or so um, is mostly based on um, a report written by my former colleagues, uh, Karen Smith Yoshimura, uh, which in turn is based on five years worth of discussions between um, metadata managers as part of the OCLC Research uh, Library Partnership. And she has called her report transitioning to the next generation of metadata, thus taking this far beyond just linked data or just identifiers. Um, she, together with this group of, of metadata specialists, um, has looked at how is metadata changing, why is it changing, uh, uh, what is changing, and they have they have identified a number of trends and described them in, in this excellent report, which is still foundational and worth a read. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend uh, that you do so. And some of these trends are uh, obviously the transition uh, to linked data, to the use of identifiers. Um, she is describing how, how we're dealing with inside out collections, but also increasingly facilitated, facilitated collections. Um, there is the evolution of metadata as a service, and you might also think about data science here. And all of this then um, leads to completely new or at least changing staffing requirements. So what kind, and I'll come back to this uh, uh, at the end of my, my presentation, uh, what does all of this mean for staffing? What does all of this mean for the skills we need um, to hire? Um, this truly foundational report was there was published around 2020 2019 or 2020 and since then we uh we have continued our our research we have continued to publish and um gather additional evidence um for example uh in response to our discussions at the metadata managers focus group um we initiated the reimagine descriptive workflow uh effort to reflect the concerns that grew around uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in metadata work. Uh, we also pulled together a content DM pilot so that there was a pilot around our digital collection software. And we continue to look at um, the metadata impact on um, research information management services. Now that's an area you're all probably very familiar with. Um, and all of this, all of this work has reinforced uh, what was included in the in the previous report and added um, additional evidence to it. And since this report was published, uh, this transition has only continued. It has deepened and it has been accelerated by uh, surprising developments, uh, by namely by uh, the pandemic. Uh, so this pandemic has clearly accelerated some of the trends already um, uh, existing. In particular, the uh, digital shifts or the trend from print to electronic, but also the trend from the move to open, as we call it. Uh, so from close of paywall content to increasingly open access. So if if we're talking about the transformative change and, and how this change of met in the area of metadata is transformative, why is it changing at all? Wasn't it good as it was? And 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 couldn't we just go on as we as we did before? Well, clearly not. Um, there are a number of reasons why metadata is changing now, um, starting with the fact that library metadata formats, as Mark and others, were created and used by librarians, confirming tools that were mainly used and understood by librarians, and as such, they did a good job. Let's be honest. Uh, but these rules were only, uh, and very often also the metadata, the resulting metadata was only understood by librarians. Um, this type of metadata is record centered, it's expensive to produce, it has historical size limitation, it's limited in its coverage. So for example, it's usually not including articles within scholarly journals or other scholarly outputs. Um, the infrastructure that 
uh, is used for this kind of metadata has been adequate for managing corrections and enhancement enhancements very easily. And there has been um, maybe a necessary emphasis on perfection that has all that has contributed to uh, the slowness, a certain slowness of metadata creation. Uh, in the end, this type of metadata, which has served as well for a while and still serves as well in, in some areas, is not scalable enough to meet all the requirements, uh, especially given the rapid um, digital change we're seeing. And to just quote from Karen's report, um, in short, our metadata could be better, there is not enough of it, and the metadata that does exist is not used widely outside the library domain. Now, it's not only the metadata, it's also the uh, metadata creation process that's changing. Um, it's no longer created by library staff alone. Publishers, authors, other interested parties, they're all equally involved in metadata creation. Uh, metadata can now be enhanced or corrected by machines, by machines, uh, think artificial intelligence, um, but also by crowdsourcing. So bringing in community knowledge. Um, Metadata creation has also been pushed forward in the scholarly life cycle with publishers creating metadata records much earlier than in the traditional cataloging process. And for certain work workflows, this is also um, definitely um, necessary to have the metadata much earlier in the process. One of those examples obviously is research information management, and I mentioned this here be because we have a broad corpus also of, of research in this area. Um, and obviously, um, most of you will be familiar with this uh, and have Chris systems maybe in their um, institutions. So this is one of the many area where we do have a large corpus of metadata collected, aggregated for a number of purposes uh, where traditional metadata just doesn't help us. And before I move on, because we thought, well, let's let's not have me talk for nearly an hour. Um, let us know what you think in the chat. So I talked a little bit about why metadata must change and how it's changing and how in particular the metadata creation process is changing. So what do you think? Uh, what are the most important changes in this area? Uh, did I forget to mention some? Are, are you seeing others that we haven't highlighted or would you, would you like to add anything uh, here? And so uh, while I keep the slide up, I will ask my colleague Fiona to take the lead for this here. So Fiona, what do you what do we see in the chat? Um, so far, there's not a huge amount. I've got some questions around. Um, do you have to pay to supply your bibliographic records to WorldCat? And we're just just um, clarifying there's a range of options depending on need and level of visibility and such like. Um, and Nadia, I was just going to suggest probably put you in touch with your regional account manager, which I can do offline and they can go through the options with you. But other than that, there aren't any chats, uh, any additional questions at the moment. Um, but we are really interested to hear from you as librarians, what value you see in this and why you think metadata needs to change. Um, one thing I should have said at the beginning when you sort of put this into context, a lot of you will be aware of the work that we've done with the MBK and Plan M, which has been all about um, changing the metadata landscape in the UK. Um, so we see this very much as a representation of that and helping drive the metadata community forward. So we're interested to get feedback from you in terms of where you would see the value of this. Do you think it's something that you would support um, within your organisations? So we're just keen for any any inputs along those lines, feel free to to unmute or to put anything in the in the chat. Did I capture that right, Anetta? Pretty much. I'm not seeing the chat, but um, yeah, everything else you okay. said, absolutely yes. Are we okay. Interested in hearing this, and as I as I uh, as I said, there is also. Um, should you feel that Mark is still doing a good job, I I think um, that that is true as well. So. Um, never, never change your running system. This is about um, metadata changes to cover all the other aspects where the current metadata is not always, not always helping. Yeah. So why? Some, que some questions coming through now. So okay. Let me have a look and comments as well. So 
Um, a comment from Galen at Open University, metadata needs to become more open, needs to be part of the packages of content we acquire. OK, definitely take that on board. Um, in terms of where the MBK and plan are from our perspective, we still very much support the findings of the Plan M report and where it supports where it suggests the metadata landscape needs to go within the UK. So we're still very supportive of a national agreement if that can be secured. Um, as many of you know, that's um, doesn't look to be likely at this point in time, but we are very hopeful that we can reopen discussions and look at um, options uh, for the future. So we're still very supportive of, of everything within that plan. And and if that hasn't answered your question fully, feel free to contact me directly and I can discuss with you in, in more detail. Um, so and the next one is why change? We need a more flexible model. Uh, the questions are coming in. I'm losing sight of the one I'm trying to read. We need a, a more flexible model for descriptive cataloging in terms of language sustainability. Yeah, so another thing that we're looking at within OCLC is um, subject headings and, and bringing in a range of more diverse headings that will uh, reflect the current focus on equity, diversity and inclusion within the library community. Um, Coming up more than that as well. Yeah, so Annette will talk about that a bit more. It's very important. Um, Emma, absolutely, we would support that and that's what we would like to see happen as well um, in terms of the National Metadata Agreement. Um, and another one, I'm interested in how best to prepare existing data for the future and how we make the best use of it. And Esther, have you got any thoughts on that? Well, my standard, my uh, identifiers is, is my, my usual standards reply. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> have identifiers wherever mm -hmm. you can have them. But mm -hmm. uh, very, very often indeed what we see in, in initial linked data projects is that the project tells you, can tell you something about the data changes you would need in the, to make in the originating data so that you can then in turn create better linked data. So that is that's definitely part of the learning, learning process. But identifiers is, is, is clearly a step in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Standardization, standardization, standardization is also one. Yeah. It's always a challenge, I guess, isn't it? With oh, yeah. pub publishers having different approaches to, to how they present metadata and such like, it's always going to be a challenge. Well, we um, have metadata creation in the channel is clearly also helpful. Um, yeah. I, I mentioned that before. That's also a process that we'd like to support. OK, so let's move on then, maybe. OK, thanks, Anissa. So why does it need, why is it changing and how is the creation process changing and what is all of this doing with the metadata itself? So I think what we're seeing is that especially marked data um, was created for a very specific library specific purposes, but now um, we are moving beyond that and that is good. We are moving to using also domain specific vocabularies, but I would also add here general purpose vocabularies and then link them up. Um, we are obviously reducing um, abbreviations and other 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 practices, um, other other uh, rules that are making it difficult for machines to read this data. So, um, but we are also moving away increasingly. Oh, we are. <laughs> hoping to soon be able to move away from or at least add to the existing uh, platforms, platforms that can link components and that can uh, manage knowledge graphs, not just mark records. So we are we are increasingly seeing projects uh, building graphs and then, of course, links between knowledge graphs and all of this will not be news to you, uh, except uh, just as uh, the focus on persistent identifiers and and just to mention, um, you know, the orchids of the IDs of this world or the ISNIs or the DOIs, these are super important um, to create those links in a machine readable, in a machine readable form, but also then to continue with um, some practices such as uh, sharing the sharing the bird and doing this cooperatively, etc. Um, 
all of this is not a minor change. This is really a complete change of mindset. So this kind of work, this identity management work, if you're, we're talking about authorities or entity management work, really poses a change in focus. And this is a quote from the report, from providing access points in resource descriptions to describing the entities in the resource. This could be works, it could be persons, corporate bodies, places, events, and many others, and then establishing relationships and links between them. And the, the challenge here is that this really um, is a completely different way of working. Um, you need to know what to do. You need to decide what to do. You need to also decide where to stop, where to stop uh, what is in scope and what is out of scope. And this then creates completely new quality criteria. So for example, you have this collection of postcards. What's in scope and what isn't? Is it just um, this is a postcard from New York and it shows you know, something that allows us to identify um, the town? Is it is in scope to, um, to note the sender and the receiver and maybe a date? Is it in scope to also talk about the text? Um, if this text refers to, I don't know, visiting a fair, would having information about that um, be in scope or would that already be describing the context? So completely new um, definitions of completeness, by for example. So this really is a, is a big shift and the group of metadata managers discussing this was very clear about this. And this then has implications for staffing. Um, this is implications because we, we still need those understanding traditional cataloging, but we also need people understanding and being comfortable with um, new ways of working. Unfortunately, we cannot yet define those competencies that we are, we are going to need very clearly because we're still defining this new world. This is a moving target um, and this makes it this makes it highly complex. There's a lot of learning by doing. There's a lot of still experimenting and there's a lot of um, um, agile approaches. So, and, and, and all of this comes with these, these new criteria of quality and completeness that I've just mentioned. And at the same time, we as libraries um, and as organizations serving libraries don't count time in years or decades. We'd like this data that we are creating and that we are curating and maintaining um, to still work in decades and hopefully also in centuries. That's what we've done in the past, and that's kind of the, the time frame we are looking at. So all of this makes it really complex. Um, and that's also what the working group clearly formulated. This is a culture shift from pride in production alone to valuing opportunities to learn explore and try new approaches to metadata work. And we've done this for 10 years now. We are still uh, not in a world where this is a standard workflow. So this is going to stay complex. And I can say that in the discussions that I've had with people about hiring and staffing, very often um, what I hear is hire for soft skills. So if you're wondering what to do, that's what I hear very often higher for soft skills because the hard skills can be learned, but you need people who are who can who can live and thrive in a world where not everything is set in stone, where things are constantly changing, where they are learning, where learning is is the new normal, or maybe has always been normal, but is is even more important. And and that's that's kind of the um, the skill set you'll need in the in the future, likely. Uh, Fiona has already mentioned it, the transition and the, the changes in the metadata itself um, has a lot to do with plural, plur, pluralization. This is really tricky for me. So um, thinking about diversity, equity and inclusion, which is a really, really important topic. Uh, this does change metadata. Uh, it changes um, a lot around this. Um, we cannot uphold the notion of a one size fits all correct vocabulary anymore any longer. We have learned to embrace the idea that there is no one single truth in words, that different statements might be correct in their own contexts, that conflicting statements maybe represent different worldviews and thus are both correct. 
Um, and this is meanwhile resulted in concrete activity. If you just think of some changes to the uh, the Library of Congress made to um, certain subject having headings and all the work that LCLC is also doing in this area. Um, but obviously there's still a lot of ground still to cover. And if you're if you're interested in this topic, I, I recommend this report to you that just recently been published. Um, in this report, and I'm not going through the whole text on this slide here, um, basically um, a three characters three categories of work were identified and three categories uh, where, where something has to happen. The first thing is the organization shift. This is really about uh, priorities and then also budgeting, budget and staffing. Those priorities. It's about the workflows, um, the changes in, in daily practice, but also leadership support for these changes ongoing. Um, and then finally, obviously, um, professional and personal development in this area to make all of this possible. And before moving on, we have these questions for you again. So I talked a little bit about the changes. I so what do you think? Um, are you seeing these changes in data? Are you thinking they're necessary? And what which are the most important changes happening or, or due to happen? Changes that haven't happened yet, but uh, urgently needed uh, to happen. We'd like to hear from you in the chat. Fiona, are you seeing anything? Um, no, I'm not seeing, well, well no, I've shared links to the sign. reports. Let me just have a look. They had a question about do we work with um, standards such as RDA? Um, and just to confirm, yes, we do. Um, we are a great advocate of, um, of standards as well. Um, we are heavily involved in NISO. Um, and other similar bodies that look to develop standards across the, the library community. Um, another comment, quality could be measured by levels of trust and usage levels of the next generation metadata. Interesting concept. Um, any, I'm not seeing any, any others come through. But certainly as we come around and talk to each of you, you know, we'd be really interested to get your feedback on this and um, you know, how, how important do you see the need to, to change metadata in your views of the, the Plan M report and recommendations and um, what do you think libraries need to do to try and adopt these um, things? OK, so we're seeing some comments coming in. So as much as we may be tied to Mark currently in the library domain, we do have to realise that we're seeing increasing amounts of metadata from external sources that is not native mark. If it originates as an XML format with PIDs, why squish it into a mark record? Uh -huh. But what, hmm, interesting, what do we do? What do we then do with our legacy mark records? So that's taking it way forward, isn't it, in terms of where mark records would be redundant, if you like. Um, yeah, and how you combine it two walls without without uh, replacing something that works. Mm. Um, that's always the question. Do I start with what works and replace that so I can then innovate? Or do I innovate where I have nothing? And mm. then try to combine the two walls as as we try to do with Wildcat and the upcoming Wildcat entities. Yeah. This mark is there to stay for a long time, like it or not. Um, yeah. And it does work in certain areas, but how do we connect it with other worlds where doesn't work uh, for some reason we need something else yeah yeah another interesting comment here definite change towards identifiers and links but it's a hard sell being in a period of transition for so long which is a really relevant point where you know we're all just starting to emerge from the covid pandemic where we've all had to turn everything upside down and um you know completely rethink our workflows just to just to get by um yeah, how long are senior management likely to be prepared to support experimentation? I guess we just have to justify and, and, and be able to convey where this fits into kind of the future development of metadata and how we, we think it will help um, improve workflows and get towards that standardisation. And um, OK, another comment regarding EDI changes the subject headings. Oh, this is a really just comment. WMS allows us to relabel subject headings at institution library level, but welcome updates to subject headings being coordinated at a national 
or cataloging style level. So yeah, there are more changes to come along those lines. So just keep an eye on what's going on. Um, and then the final comment, having systems actually support linking between different data sets for different kinds of material would be good. And that's the kind of thing that work at entities is looking to do is to, to join up all different entities. Um, I'll put the URL in the chat. Feel free to go and have a play around with it if you would like to. And that's it on the questions for the moment, but feel free to keep them coming. These are really interesting yep. comments and questions that are coming through. Right. And maybe maybe just sharing um, a little bit from my practice. So I think I, I, I don't think that 10 years ago when when the first libraries in this world started for Ernest to implement um, uh, our linked data as their, their main cataloging format. And when when we all did our research, we didn't think that 10 years later we'd still be here. And most of us still experimenting. OCLC has just released production infrastructure, etc. So it's it's taking longer than than we might think. But there's also a lot that has happened and evolved, and and we are making progress. But it's it's really taking a long time. And as I said, um, this is something we we can't joke around with something as important as metadata. Uh, we also need to do it in a sustainable and and responsible way. And this is maybe maybe contributing to the to the slight you know slowness perceived slowness um, in these, but also in these cases where I've seen change, it was very often leadership just saying, "Now we we go for it. We don't we don't ask any longer what 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 is this doing? What is this bringing to the table? We we just go for it and see what happens." But that that's a big decision uh, to make. Hoping that this adds to the discussion a little bit. Uh, so let's move on. So in the metadata managers group, they obviously also discussed infrastructure. Now, you know, given all the needs, given all the changes we need, what does that mean for infrastructure? Well, that's that's a complicated question, and that's why this slide has only questions. Uh, so to start with, how can we still cooperatively do all of this? Because we have been cooperating. On cataloging, how can we do the same thing in a next generation metadata environment? Um, uh, also, questions around centralization versus decentralization. Uh, what will work in 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 a in a different environment? Decentralization would is, is, do we still need something centralized, or do we do we need to to combine all those different decentralized graphs so we have more local or regional control, or then bring everything together, which could be could be an an opportunity. What I think, think someone mentioned it in, in the chat. Uh, what does trustworthy provenance look like in this context? And also then the context of diversity, equity, inclusion. What, what could this be, trustworthy provenance? Um, and, and then also the, the, uh, the, the last question, what is the role of libraries? Um, if, if you look at general purpose infrastructure, such as Wikibase, Wikidata, um, could they just use one of those or should they use one of those or should they create their own more, more specific environments and then contribute from from that? Um, so lots of question, interesting questions that were discussed in that group. Um, we at OCLC have looked at those and we think there's no easy answer because partly because there are so very different requirements depending on what are you looking at. Are you looking at shared homogeneous centralized entities? Basically, you're cataloging data that you wish to convert to bit frame, if LRM, link data, whatever. Uh, so shared homogeneous um, data. Um, then we, we can talk about, well, we can do this centrally. We can apply lots of machine matching and automation. Um, Usually we're talking here about well accepted and established contexts with identifiers that we can use for persons, for works. Uh, and yes, there are still changes because this kind of work will blur the line between bibliographic description and authority description. They will become one one thing basically. Um, but then if you look at the special collections, we are talking about very heterogeneous data structures. We are talking about very localized, very specific uh, requirements uh, where automation does not always hand help or where after some semi-automated reconciliation, you still have to correct by hand in for, for many individual cases where we are talking about 
other contexts, other entities which are less well described, less well identified, and where, as I as I mentioned in uh, with the example of the um, postcard collection, the, the the line between what is object description and what is already context description and what is in scope and what is out of scope really is blurred, and we need to make decisions in that space. So we we sort of feel that there is room for a centralized infrastructure to support that kind of work, uh, but we also need um, open interfaces um, and, and useful interfaces that allow um, us and others to build custom applications, custom in the sense that they will then cater for these very specific um, uh, needs that come with, with specific special collections. And also we need to see that, or at least we see it the way that this is no longer just describing things and objects. This is knowledge work because new knowledge is created by creating those links. We understand things that we didn't understand before. So this is creation of knowledge. Um, and of course, automating the left hand side. Gives us the time and the staff to do the work on the right hand side and to create new knowledge. Um, and if <laughs> we again have a question for you before moving on, um, because and I go back to my slide uh, while you while you think about it, um, because this was a lot to take in. Which of those do you feel are the most urgent? So is this more about the, the mass data that you'd like to convert? Or would you say, well, no, the special collections are much more important, or we have something completely different that is keeping us awake at night um, and where linked data or knowledge work could benefit us the most. So looking at this, what do you what do you feel? Where do you see yourself? Where do you see your big issues or the, the needs or what is it you'd like to get started with? Let me give you some time to think about it. Yes, yeah, it's just the kind of thing that we're, we're asking libraries to think about as we talk to them about how we see this <clears throat> next generation of metadata developing. Um, just get a sense of the priorities, as Anita said. There was a comment from before about image metadata. I don't know if you saw that, Fiona, if you wanted to. I've perhaps... missed that one. Let me scroll back up if I can. Uh, from Rachel. Rachel. Oh yes, this is making me think of my MSc dis dissertation. Is that the one? Um, where I worked with a small cultural heritage organization and created a hybrid metadata schema using Dublin Core and VRA Core. How do we make image metadata more accessible and visible to a non-library audience librarian audience or an audience who doesn't have knowledge of Mark? So I guess that is one element that is where the World Care Entities kind of approach would come in to its own, really, because it would pull together images and those kinds of content related to, I don't know, Bob Dylan or or whatever entity it was that you were, you were trying to gather information from. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in Mark or have, have that knowledge of Mark. Right. And in risking something here because I'm really no expert on this, but I'm just just come came attended a conference in September where where there was a presentation about AAAF and what they did with their images and they made mm -hmm. a very strong point saying, well, we are, we are, we're thinking about AAAF as only be being about images, but we should be using it much more also for the metadata. Um, that is seems to be uh, seem to be opportunities uh, yet to discover, but again, I'm not very well versed on this. It seems to all come back to that need for standards, doesn't it? And I think standards that work for different types of content um, and can integrate with other types. So I guess it's that ability to be interoperable and that's right and communicate yeah. with with a, with other standards. And actually, what we're building now with work and entities, and we're coming to that in a moment, um, will also inform our our digital collection software. So for the first time, maybe. Uh, yeah. We have one ontology for both worlds, which is, I think, is very exciting and very cool. 
not the American exciting, but the real, you know, German exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Hello. Avoid saying the, the words awesome too much, which is what, yeah. we, often, yeah, what we often hear. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, Thank so you. After all of this, you can imagine that we not only have an opinion on this, but we also um, act on it. Um, so why libraries? We have built a library specific ecosystem for entities and we are continuing to build it out. Uh, we do feel that there is a need or value in a li library specific ecosystems, not just one, but um, the library specific ecosystems. Because, uh, well, the first one is why not Wikidata? And you get we get the question all the time. And maybe you ask this question to yourself all the time. Well, if you look at the notability criteria, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. It's built to represent knowledge, existing knowledge. It's not created for um, creation of new knowledge. Um, but also, this is just libraries are at the center of, of, of this work organizing knowledge, making it discoverable. In, in a sense, they should, of course, they, they should have their own ecosystem to do that, what, what they're, they were um, they're, they're designed to do, and then share it with the, with the world. They also have, we all have developed our specific, very specific policies and standards and quality criteria, and they don't often match with general purpose um, ecosystems. Uh, and as I mentioned, when we think about reliability and also longevity, uh, we have completely different different things in mind than 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 uh, many other community um, communities. So there are something specific to what we need, feel we need, and um, that that alone makes it um, worthwhile having having our own ecosystem. But it's also the immense scale we're dealing with here. So just imagine uh, we're still a small group, but just imagine all libraries in the world doing this kind of work. Um, this is just something the existing softwares, including Wikibase, aren't just 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 aren't built for and can't serve. Um, that's also why why um, it's perfect for to experiment and to um, uh, get started. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but for the for the immense scale we're looking at for a production environment, um, at least at OCLC, um, clearly um, this this hasn't worked. But and that is a big but and a good but. This doesn't mean we still can't feed into those general purpose ecosystems and we can't still feed information uh, into them so that the general public can benefit from it. Absolutely not. This is about complementing each other. This is not about replacing each other or making one redundant. Uh, this is about doing what we're doing best um, in ecosystems that serve our purposes and then sharing whatever needs to be shared, can be shared, should be shared. Um, at certain points with either general purpose ecosystems, special purpose ecosystems, domain specific, one, wherever we can contribute uh, to do that um, in a way that's that's fit for the purpose. So that's kind of our, our vision for, for how, how, how libraries could play that central role and still um, have all their requirements fulfilled and still, you know, open up to the world. And yes, we do see a role for OCLC in this. Um, Fiona has talked about WorldCat previously, and just as WorldCat was built for sharing mark data, uh, we see we see a role for OCLC in realizing something similar around next generation metadata. We do believe in the value of library still. We still believe in the value of library cooperation. Also in this new context, uh, we have supported libraries with infrastructure for m more than 50 years, and we have done our research. We really have done our research for more than 10 years now. We know, we understand what is needed to work with linked data at scale, and that's why we've built this um, global sustainable infrastructure, and we have, have been doing this with uh, the community, and we're going to do this with the community um, we serve. And what we've built, We've mentioned it a couple of times, and you find the URL here. Once again, is uh, something we call WorldCat Entities. So WorldCat Entities is the name for an infrastructure, but it's also the entities themselves. So for now, and we only got started, this is a beginning, this is a young product, uh, not even a product because it's not released yet. Um, we have released the 150 million entities on a publicly available website. Uh, all of these entities have an identifier and we commit to this to the identifier's persistence from day one after release in May. 
um, which is a lot of work, as you know, persistence takes a lot of work. Um, we have started with just works on persons uh, and are going to extend the scope of this uh, over time as we build it out. And we are now looking at um, enhancing the editing tool. We have built a simple editing tool called Meridian. We are going to build out functionality for this one. Um, we also uh, have built some APIs, search APIs, management APIs um, that we are, we are updating. And we're going to work with some development partners who are going to work with this production data in certain as part of their real life projects to honestly tell us uh, uh, what, what they think, what they what they miss maybe and what we can do better so that when we release this to the general public in the course of 2023, it's um, as fit for the purpose as young solution can be. Um, that's our plan. And um, with this, I hand over to Fiona once more. Lovely, thank you, Anetta. Um, I'm conscious of time as well that we're coming to the to the end of um, the hour, as it were. Um, really, just wanted to wrap up by mentioning a webinar that we're running tomorrow um, about Wellcat entities. So, if you're keen to find out a bit more about it and have a look at it and see how it works, I'll put the registration link in the chat for you. Um, or if you just Google it, you should be able to to find it. Um, and then. Um, again, if you want to get some more information about OCLC and what we're up to, you can subscribe to various um, listservs and email updates and things from us. So feel free to do that if that's of interest. And that's it, really. I'm conscious it's quite an in-depth and quite detailed um, topic and overview, but I hope you've all found this quite useful today. It's certainly prompted a lot of um, discussion and some good questions in the chat, which we really welcome. Um, I don't know if anybody's got anything else that they would like to to mention. 